Today, I want to talk about why video games are Hollywood's next big gold rush. First, let's look at the state of play, because currently video game adaptations are having a bit of a moment. The Mario movie opened to 377 million, setting a record for animated movies. HBO's The Last of Us has received tons of critical praise, both from gamers and non-gamers alike. In 2021, Arcane, based on League of Legends, won an Emmy. In 2022, Sonic 2 and Uncharted each earned 400 million. And a couple of years ago, Sonic's predecessor earned 300 million worldwide. Both franchises earned a significant portion overseas, underscoring the global appeal of video game movies. So that's the state of video game movies currently. Now I wanna look at why I think it's gonna change fairly soon. Number one, the risk adverse culture of Hollywood. Hollywood is extremely risk adverse, and it's always preferable to use a source material with a built-in fan base because it's believed it'll mitigate losses. Hollywood has been mining a ton of its most valuable IPs. Star Wars is pretty directionless. They're not really sure if they need to focus on the shows or on the movies and what stories they actually want to tell. The Harry Potter prequel movies have been earning less and less for each sequel, and the writing is just kind of convoluted and confusing. They're trying to do too many things all in one movie. There's a Lord of the Rings reboot set, but it's gonna be really hard to compete against Peter Jackson's trilogy. And while I personally enjoyed The Rings of Power, I'm not sure Amazon saw the return on investment for one of the most expensive TV shows ever produced. Jurassic Park is an incredibly boring franchise right now, and I'm not really sure what the Transformers are gonna do. And most importantly, there's the downward trend of superhero movies. Let's start with Marvel. So last year, Disney fired Bob Chappick, bringing back Bob Iger. Recently, Marvel fired chairman Ike Perlmutter, and Marvel also plans to reduce its target output. There's also just the general downward trend, both in the quality and in the box office of Marvel movies. For example, a lot of the recent MCU sequels, they've made less than their previous films. Thor Love and Thunder made less than Thor Ragnarok. Black Panther 2 made less than Black Panther 1. Ant-Man Quantumania made less than Ant-Man and the Wasp. Marvel Phase 4 and 5 just aren't really sure what they want to do. It just seems like a random collection of stories rather than the first three phases of Marvel that was building to one climactic story. I made a whole video discussing the problems of the Marvel Cinematic Universe that I'll link if you want to watch that to get a lot more detail about my thoughts about the future of it. There's also just the elephant in the room, Jonathan Major's future in the MCU. The next Avengers movie is supposed to be Kang Dynasty and Kang is supposed to make an appearance in a lot of other MCU movies. So what are they going to do about that? I don't know yet. Now let's go over to the DCU. Black Adam and Shazam 2 were both critical and financial failures, and it just felt like a fizzling out of the old DCU. James Gunn has a promising new slate of movies, and it's exciting to see what potential stories to tell. Personally, I'm really excited for him to rebuild the DCU, and I think there are really good Superman stories that need to be told, and I'd love to play that role. James Gunn is bringing a lot of life and energy to DC, and especially having some sort of overarching creative plan that DC always seems to be really lacking in comparison with Marvel. But in general, most of the name recognized comic book characters have been utilized already, sometimes two or three times. Yes, there are still interesting stories to tell, but they won't feel new the same way the first kind of iteration of superhero movies felt. Because of this faltering of already really well-established IPs, Video games provide a wide open frontier for studios to collect up new IPs. Now let's look at the upward trend of video games. Number one, they're not just for nerds anymore. The size of the market it just continues to grow. 10 or 20 years ago, video games were kind of considered a niche interest and something just for nerds. But now the size of the video game market continues to grow. Last year it was estimated 184 billion revenue in 2022. 70% of American adults said they played a video game last year. The accessibility of video games has significantly increased with mobile gaming. For video game makers, movies can be seen as a way to reach a wider audience, increasing the number of people who buy the games. This is kind of like copying the Disney model. The Disney model was a self-reinforcing model that increased all different aspects of Disney's sales. So movies increased merchandise sales, merchandise sales increased park sales, park sales increased movie sales. And this meant that even if a movie didn't perform well, it would still increase merchandise and park sales. So really, even when Disney lost, they still won. The video game model could be similar, substituting games for parks. So games could help sell movies, which helped sell merchandise, which helped sell games again. And for example, The Last of Us had a 322% surge in video game sales. And this is from a game from 2013. Just because video games are so profitable, movies could be considered advertisements to bring in a new audience to the games. Sony especially has an easy pipeline between making both games and movies, and they've already been doing this for years with the Spider-Man games and movies. I think Microsoft has a really big incentive to get in on the action. I also wouldn't be surprised if Disney tries to acquire a video game developer as well. For all the success of the MCU, they haven't really had a hit video game the way that Sony or Warner Brothers has. 
Amazon, and perhaps Apple to a small extent, have an incentive to make video game movies because they could also make money off the sale of the games and the movies, even if they aren't producing the games themselves. And for example, Amazon is now working on a Warhammer cinematic universe. Similarly, even though there's been some flops like Warcraft or Max Payne, Hitman, Prince of Persia, or classically, the old Mario, I think it's also important to note that the first comic book movie came out in 1978. But the MCU didn't start dominating the box office until maybe 2008. That's a 30 year lag. And a lot of that is just people's exposure to comics, allowing comics to write better stories, and all these aspects that I think that the video game industry has been able to mature as well. So even though maybe the first video game movie might be the Super Mario movie, which was terrible, there's been a lot of time for video game stories to really improve since then. And I think now is an opportune time for video games to seize the box office, especially because CGI has improved so much that we can really create a lot better visuals that fit a lot of the game aesthetics that have been made. To underscore the importance of video games, established film IPs are also trying to break into gaming. The Harry Potter franchise recently launched Hogwarts Legacy, which has been a huge hit. James Gunn even said that video games will be integrated into the wider DCU storytelling, even having the actors from the films reprising their roles as voice actors in the video game and having the stories intertwined with the films. BAFTA, the British version of the Academy of Motion Pictures, has also been putting a lot more emphasis on increasing the membership within the gaming industry. Another thing to remember is the IP catalog. One of the most wonderful things about video games is how different so many are from each other. There are narrative-based games like The Last of Us and platform games like Mario, and they lead to very different movies. For narrative games, there's Red Dead Redemption, Grand Theft Auto, Bioshock, Mass Effect, Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Dark Souls, Half-Life, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Final Fantasy, just to name a few. There's so many beloved franchises that I think would look so cool on the big screen. Personally, I'm really excited for Bioshock to be adapted. Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the best stories I've ever played through, and I think that story would convert so well to a TV series. And there's also a lot of non-narrative games that could be adapted somehow. Look at Arcane for an example of adapting League of Legends, which isn't a story, but they adapted it into a show and even won an Emmy for it. So there's eSport games like Overwatch, Rocket League, and Fortnite. And these have huge followings and there's a lot of money involved in these games. There's also casual games which have a really broad audience that play them, like Animal Crossing, Minecraft, Among Us, and Stardew Valley. Again, this is just a sample of some of the biggest known IPs. There's tons of games out there that people could be interested in playing as well. Challenges, or why I might be wrong. One great aspect of comic books is that there isn't a definitive version of the characters. There are different, sometimes conflicting origin stories, and lots of the characters have multiple iterations with a variety of writers and artists. So, when the movies were made, the filmmakers had two distinct advantages. First, they could leverage what aspects were best received by readers and leave behind the least popular aspects. Second, the movies were allowed to be their own distinct iteration of a character, rather than an adaptation of the one true version. Video games, on the other hand, there's often only one definitive version of a character or setting, so changes to those aspects may be less well received by fans. So with the exception of Nintendo, these are mostly independent stories. Most don't have huge overarching universes the way that comic books do. This could be a bad thing. It means that maybe you have to have less investment to create a giant 20 year series, or it could mean it's more self-contained that we have some franchises that are hits and some franchises that are flops. Another huge challenge is that video games are long. Often a short story would be 20 hours, which is difficult to adapt into a three hour movie or a 10 hour TV show. The video gameplay for the main story of The Last of Us is only about 15 hours. So that converted well into a nine hour show, but that's more of the exception than the rule. People play hundreds of hours on some of these games. And also, while CGI has advanced to help really create a lot of these more immersive worlds, it's also still very expensive. So creating the world of Rapture or Mass Effect, it's gonna require a lot of money. And so I'm interested to see if studios actually want to spend that. Thanks so much for watching. I'm working on a lot of other videos as well, like the evolution of Wes Anderson, as well as Superman the movie versus Man of Steel the movie. So make sure to subscribe because there's a lot of great stuff coming in the future.